So, uh, my name is Tom, and I'm here to talk about the uh, actionable insights from Excel sheets in emails. Um, that is uh, probably quite different to what other people are talking about, uh, but I'll get into uh, why that is a subject that's interesting to us uh, in my company and Nias. Uh, and the, the case that I'll be talking about is uh, some a case about soil pollution, where quite a lot of different people are involved. And, and how they get the actionable insights. And it's customer engagement, so it's a, it's a lot about how do I make my customers, are very much my colleagues, but also the end customer, how do I make their experience with their data uh, better? So let's start just uh, briefly introducing who's speaking and uh, what the company that I'm from is all about. So my name is Torben, and I'm actually uh, originally a civil engineer, uh, working with the uh, with soil and concrete and that kind of thing. Uh, but it's it's pretty data heavy. There's a lot of data involved in that kind of work. So over time, it turned out to be more like this. So now I'm heading a data science department in uh, in Neos, um, where we have a few people who help our engineering colleagues uh, work better with their data, and then Neos is basically just a bunch of these. It's just a bunch of engineers, a uh, couple of thousand of them. And these are often our end customers, actually. We help our colleagues on their projects. And I think that is a main topic. That's probably why um, the case that I'm talking to about today is as it is, is we are working on projects. And they're often fast paced and with colleagues that just need something that works well enough for the project that they're working on. So the technologies we use might be slightly different. Uh, because we're working always in NEOS, we always have around 7,000 open projects, and we do anything from drone inspections to offshore wind farms to uh, high-rise buildings, infrastructure, you name it. So there's a lot of different domains happening, and it's a lot of different kinds of data, and they are often messy data in Excel sheets, in emails. And that's why I've taken a, a case about that with me today. But just to explain where, where this fits in what we are doing. Um, we are working um, in in a process where people get data and need to uh, give a solution to their to their end customer. And usually, uh, what I'm presenting here is it's what's going on. A lot of you probably recognize that from from how it happens in your company as well. So first of all, someone in the organization starts solving a problem. They have an idea. I'll do this like this. I'll make a spreadsheet. It'll handle my data in a in a certain way. And if it's a good enough idea. There's going to be some kind of business ownership of that idea. Some colleague will say, well, that's brilliant. Can I use that on my project as well? And then what started out to just be something on his local C drive grows to be something that more people rely on and it becomes a little bit more business critical. Once it's really is becoming business critical, then to my opinion, it's probably been growing too big. And the, the poor guy who, who made the solution uh, now starts doing a lot of support on the, on the spreadsheet or on the Python code or whatever he's been doing. And then what? What when that happens? That happens a lot on our 7,000 projects. Well, then the logical next step is probably to do this. Let's buy some software, get a third party vendor to make some software for us. Let's solve this problem so it's handled. We handle our data in a, in a certain way. The problem with that is we there's there's a disconnect between the great ideas from the domain expert and what he actually did in his spreadsheet or whatever, and what the IT people will make the big solution do. And often it'll be a little bit too slow to uh, to get it uh, developed. It'll be too too expensive for the single project. You need to think a little bit too big, uh, but you probably want to end up there anyways. So what do we do? Well, our idea in the data science department is we do like this. We'll just batch in uh, another little, what we call the missing link. And that's basically to create a more robust solution based on what was originally developed. And we do that by just, if it's in Excel, maybe we'll keep it in Excel, but we'll just make the Excel sheet that much more robust, make talk to databases. Um, maybe if, if he was doing um, some analysis, we'll, we'll handle uh, the analysis in a little bit more robust way. But it's easily adopted, we'll make it in software that they already have on their computer or cloud-based so they can just uh, use it directly in their browser. And then afterwards, once that's been going on for a few years, maybe that will be the, the perfect specifications for an actual software solution. So that the missing link is, uh, is the case today. So the case itself, um, this is my colleague, Johan. 
she's uh, working with soil pollution. And soil pollution is uh, is quite an advanced thing to be working with when it comes to data, uh, specifically because because uh, she's involved with some laboratories that need that data in a very specific way. So I'll just go through how they normally or how she normally works with the data flow, and then I'll show you how we've been improving on that data flow um, while still making sure that existing systems are still working the way that they are. Um, so. She has a guy who's out in the field. He's making what's called a borehole. He's extracting some soil uh, that uh, we need to send to the lab for testing. Um, and the way that she gets information from him is basically, well, he writes on a piece of paper that I've been doing this borehole at this date to this depth, and he'll write that to her. She then has the task to make an overview of what did he tell me he did, and she'll do that in a, in a spreadsheet. That's quite a normal way to do that. Next step is she needs to talk to the laboratory because they need to do some actual testing of the soil, find out how contaminated is it, because we need to figure out how to, how to handle the soil afterwards. And the way that they want to know about that is that she has to, uh, to send an order for some tests in a very specific Excel format that they send up. It's quite annoying for us to have to work in Excel, but that is uh, one of the boundaries of what we're doing. We have to send it in that specific spreadsheet, and it has to be in an email. So that's what she's doing. Then they'll send a PDF back saying, here's your receipt. This is what you ordered. That's what we'll be doing. So she has to then figure out, okay, did they actually send the receipt on what I ordered? Is there a disconnect here? And then she'll update her overview Excel sheet. Then after a few days, they've been actually, they've been doing the testing at the laboratory and they will send the, the results back to her. That's of course another Excel spreadsheet. So that's another email sent to Johan. She's got her results now. Now, she'll be getting a lot of these spreadsheets. She'll probably be getting hundreds of these during a project. So she'll try to collect them in a separate spreadsheet. So she'll make an overview of the results in the table in Excel. Probably some copy pasting going on there. Now, once all of that's done, we've actually been getting our soil, sending it to the laboratory, getting the, the receipts and the data back. And now we can start using it for something. So next guy involved is the draftsman who will actually be doing kind of a bl blueprint of, uh, of the site where we'll make, uh, it, we'll divide it into boxes where we say, well, contamination is high over here, so you need to handle that in a specific way. It's low over here, so you can handle that in an easier way. Basically, we have to uh, make a technical drawing. That's the end result. That's his job. Luckily for her, she can basically just send a link to him. She'll send a link to the results table and then based on that, he can interpret that data and make that into, into a technical drawing. The problem is he's sweating a little bit because the way that she's been setting up the results and the way that he needs his software to interpret the results are not nearly the same way. So he has quite a lot of manual uh, data handling going on over there as well. But in the end, once all of this has been going on, we have the end result. It's a drawing like this where the red squares have the most contaminated soil. We need to handle them differently than we do with the green squares. Pretty simple end result, but as you can see, the process itself has been quite convoluted. Now, that's where we came in. We came in on a project that was already going like this. So we can't just say, well, we'll install new software on all your computers and stuff. We need to, we need to handle this in a specific way, especially, especially because the laboratories, which are out of our control, they still need specific Excel sheets, and they'll send the data in the same way. We can't change that. So what we're doing is we're changing what we can. So first things first, there's a piece of paper up in the top up there. Let's change that to an app. This is the icon for Power Apps. It's just a, a Microsoft platform where we can load to no code, uh, create an app pretty fast. And since we're working on a project with limited resources, we also have to work fast and not develop something from ground up. So that was pretty easy. It was, uh, it was done in a day, and she's good to go. That app then makes sure that the data that he's pushing in automatically ends up in the spreadsheet. So now the spreadsheet acts, acts more like a database. It's not a data in, entry tool in the same way. It actually automatically gets data into it in her, her overview over there. Now, then she has to still order the data at the laboratory, not just put a magic wand there. That's basically just a small script that makes sure that that email with that specific format of a spreadsheet is automatically generated by the click of a button. So she doesn't really have to worry about the email itself and the Excel sheet itself. Getting the PDF back, we'll put that in uh, some 
Power Automate, which is just some robotics, uh, which makes sure that whenever someone on the project receives one of these PDFs from the laboratory, it'll automatically put it the right place on SharePoint and then automatically extract the data and put it in the overview. So that will just link right there. The overview is now automatically updated. She didn't have to do anything. The same thing with the results they're sending back. Again, Power Automate takes over, puts it in the right place, make sure that the results are updated. And that, that now acts as a database as well. There's actually a data model uh, happening behind the scenes in Excel where all of this data is, uh, there's an ETL process, it's extracted, uh, transformed, and loaded into that spreadsheet for her. And then afterwards, when she's sending the link to the draftsman, she's basically just linking to a data model that we've set up. Because um, we are doing this ETL process, both on the receipts and the results, um, is a data model that we can then manage. Uh, and in the end, the draftsman is not sweating as much anymore because we, we can then just make a new view into the data where he gets it the way that he likes to see it. And basically, he doesn't have to do anything manual with his data anymore. And he can just create that, uh, that drawing that he has to create. So this is, this is a new setup. This is what, uh, what I'll be showing you a little bit about. Uh, but the, I think the main idea of what's going on here is, uh, is this circle here around Yuan. As you can see, all her touch points with the data have been automated now. She's not copy pasting data. She's not worried about something ending up in the wrong place. She can just, uh, she can just work with it in a slightly more neat way. So her experience is a lot better. The guy out in the field has more or less the same experience writing on a piece of paper or writing in an app on an iPad, pretty much the same for him. The draftsman notice the, the lack of sweat above his head. He's happy because his job has become a lot easier. And then for, for me personally, probably the most important thing, the laboratory, they haven't seen anything. They don't even know we've automated the process. They get exactly the same emails they're used to getting. They're sending exactly the same emails. We don't have to bother them saying, well, we've set up a new database system. Could you please call this API or something? They're not ready for that. In their, in their world, nothing has changed. In our world, we are saving hundreds of hours and the quality has been going up, um, but it's, it's all built on existing solutions. So, uh, so it, can just, it can roll out on projects the way that they are. And then there's just a little added bonus as well, since everything is now in a, in a neat data format. Behind the scenes over here with the overview and the results, we can put some power BI. So we've been visualizing our data in the dashboard making sure that our overview is so much easier and convenient to work with across the business for all the different the participants. They can see what's going on and actually to the end customer as well. The people who actually own the plot plant where we are doing this soil contamination analysis, they can follow up how fast are you, is it going with the boreholes, how much uh, contaminated soil are you finding, and they can see that real time. So we can actually work together with different parties both at us with the, uh, the consultants, with the actual contractors who have to move the soil, and the, the, the owner of the plot of land who can also follow up. So that is also just an overview of existing data. Yeah, that's, that's basically what I'll, what I'll show you a little bit about. And now it's, uh, it's demonstration time. So I will just get out of this PowerPoint and show you here what's going on. This is, uh, this is SharePoint. I've just uh, been loading it into folders. So it's a little bit easier to see. But basically, she now has one Excel file that she's using. And then there's just all these requisitions that she's sending to the laboratory. They end up automatically in, in these folders. Uh, and there's all the data that they're sending. It's also uh, automatically ending up in some folders. But let's see in the one spreadsheet that she's actually uh, working with. It looks like this. So it might be, seem a little bit silly that we're still working with spreadsheets, but she has Excel installed on her computer. She knows how to use Excel. She's not confused about having to install a different package. for. Uh, for uh, uh, she doesn't have to install Python and install Anaconda and Pandas and all of that, but she wouldn't know how to handle all of that. So we'll keep it in Excel, and it works uh, well enough. Our Power App is automatically writing all these dates into this column over here, so we can already see uh, when a borehole has been has been performed. And my apologies for this being in Danish. We are, we are a Danish company, and uh, we work in Danish, so I'll just translate what needs to be translated. 
But in general, we, you can just see there's a lot of boreholes down, there's some depths, and there's, these are all the packages that we can order from the laboratory. Now, her new easier experience with data is that she basically just goes in and presses one of these uh, white dots. She can just uh, press one of those and say, I would like to order this package for this borehole at this depth, but I also want to order that one, and I might also want to order that one. And that's no, now it's no, the, uh, the white ones are not planned, black is planned. And then we can see the red ones have been ordered from the laboratory, but they haven't sent anything back yet. If they're yellow, we've, re uh, we've received a receipt that they are going to, uh, to analyze uh, this package on this borehole at this depth. And then green is they actually did it. We, re we received the results. And behind the scenes, there's a data model here that links all of this with the uh, primary foreign keys. We know exactly what's going on. That's why we can, we can actually follow up on these, uh, on these just colored dots. And that's basically a very good overview for her. Because this now works for her as the primary tool where she can order what she wants but also where she actually can get some kind of overview. And then once she's been saying, I want to do this, it's basically just one press of a button up here. She'll press order. It'll now take the required data, put it into the specific format that the laboratory needs. You can see now it's saving it to SharePoint. So we now have a copy of that, uh, of that requisition lying on SharePoint. It automatically wrote the email for her. And it's been uh, it's been putting it in the email for her as well. And if we just open that one, you can see the kind of format that the laboratory uh, expects to see. Um, and that's that's now being sent to them as soon as, soon as I press send. So here here you go. You can see it's a diff slightly different format. Things are called something different, but the data model uh, nonetheless understands what's going on. So that's being sent to them. The laboratory is none the wiser that all of this was more or less automatic. Now, that's her experience with actually working with the data. She gets an overview. She can order things easily. Um, and then, as I said, we also, uh, we also have an overview of what's actually going on in a dashboard. So I'll just quickly show that. Um, the dashboard itself um, looks like this. So here's an overview of all the boreholes, which ones have been performed, which ones haven't. That's automatically updated from the app. Uh, there was actually a, a button in Excel as well, so you could press and then the dashboard is updated. Otherwise, it'll I think it'll refresh every hour or something like that. And then these classifications that come in all of these spreadsheets are then shown like this. So she can actually look at her entire plot of land, and they can, she can see at zero to half a meter depth, uh, what are the classifications. We can go a little bit deeper, see how to look down there. Or we can see a classification for that's quite contaminated soil. Where is that located? We can see there's, there's probably been some kind of leak of something over here because it, it clusters here. So she has that kind of uh, that kind of overview. And in the end, um, the, the end customer expects a specific type of table, which looks like this. It's a little bit of a mess. It's just thousands and thousands of lines of data. Uh, but we can set it up like this, and we can set it into the report as an appendix as they expect to see it. Yeah, so that's a uh, tour de force real quick through how we are handling pretty messy data and setting up pretty fast so people can work with it um, without interrupting the normal workflow. And if I'm correct, I'm actually out of my speaking time already. So I'll have to go to this one.